Hey, so it appears to be valuable to continue to repeat, though there is some funny games being played in that process. Let me explain. All forms rise and fall from and to the source. The source does not come and go, it always remains, but the forms rise and fall. The challenge for the forms is that the source, its essence, its substance is nothing. Awareness has no tangible properties. So there's nothing to be found. And so the forms are, for the most part, dissatisfied. And, uh, you know, we'll learn about awareness. And I would say probably like one of the, the greatest tricks of the mind on the spiritual path is they'll learn all about non-duality and spirituality and this thing called the ego. And the mind tricks, <clears throat> plays a trick into thinking that the ego, it creates a duality between, you know, I've got to get rid of this ego. I've got to stop this ego. Well, the thing to pay attention to is that I is a letter. I is a sound. I is spoken. And as soon as it's spoken, it's gone. And then oftentimes what happens is with I <clears throat> are a bunch of thoughts that make it make it feel like there's a care, there's an identity there. There's a person there, but there isn't. There is source and there are forms that rise and fall from and back into source. Uh, what happens is all of these thoughts around like, how can I self-realize arise? And those thoughts then become new thoughts. They don't really become, but thoughts follow those thoughts of understanding that source is awareness, that it's presence, that it's nothing. And while that should be sufficient, and upon recognizing that, that should be, that, that, that the, the, the self-realization should be complete. And it is complete in a way, but what ends up happening is thoughts continue to rise about going, well, that doesn't make sense to me, or I can't find that. I don't get that. What I am is I, 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 I am Andrew. I am you, you are you, me, me, you, me, I, whatever. All those are sounds that rise and fall. As soon as you say I, it's gone. And this is why they say, ask yourself, who am I? As soon as you're done saying I, all there is is space. But you might go, well, but there's still a body there. But the thing is to stop looking in the mirror and stop looking down at your torso and where's the body? There's a scene in front of you. You go, well, the scene's right there. Well, turn around and then the scene has changed and that scene's not there anymore. <clears throat> and then people would say, well, but that's preposterous to assume that the scene is gone. But... Is it, or is it preposterous to assume that it's all still there? You can argue either way, but in any event, what you can be sure of is that it goes away and without it popping up in front of you, <laughs> all it is is a memory. And eventually, if this thing continues in the direction it appears to be heading, you'll die and with it, so will the entire world. So will everything, because without you there to know of it, to be aware of it, <laughs> if a tree falls in the woods and there's no one there to hear it make a sound, does it make a sound? No, because it doesn't exist, because it needs someone there to give rise to it. And it's not someone, because there is no one. There is awareness, it is no self. There is no self, there is just presence. That is the substratum, that is the backdrop, that is the ever existing presence that's always here now. Everything else rises and falls. It's that simple. And I've had some people lately say, well, prove it to me. You have no proof of these things you say. And the irony of it is, is that first off, 
Who is it that wants proof? Thoughts want proof. Thoughts that rise and fall want proof. A thought says, give me proof. And then maybe it's a bunch of thoughts that think that they're something, a something, and they want proof, but then they fall, they're, they disappear back into the source. The source, source remains and they rise and fall. And, we, and then the mind's like, well, that's, that's ego, identification with thought. <clears throat> what is ego? It's a word, it's a sound, ego. Now it's gone. There is no ego. Well, but, but if you identify, identification with thoughts, Eckhart Tolle said identification with thoughts. That's a bunch of thought. That's a bunch of concepts. Where are they now? I was just talking about them a minute ago, and now they're gone. Oh, but I can remember them. Well, then you conjure them back up, and then they disappear again. Presence is there. Everything else comes and goes. And the seeing of this occurs, or it would appear to occur, through seeking. But who is seeking? I said it to someone recently in the comments, there's a parable or it's out of a parable in it, or it's something, something along the lines of the seeker goes seeking and discovers there is no seeker. That's what it is. So what ends up happening is there's always just been presence. There's always just been awareness. And then in awareness, the source will call it imagination, thoughts. Everything is thought. Feeling is thought. Senses are thought. It's all thought. That's the word we're going to use for it. It's actually an inexplicable thing that, that doesn't even need to be known. <clears throat> but whatever it is, it, it appears. <clears throat> it, it arises. But then it disappears. It appears and disappears all the time. And when it appears, it also sometimes appears and thinks that it's something. Thinks that it's a human. And so all of this human story on earth and all that stuff is just thought rising and falling. It's got continuity. It's got repetition. It's, it's got time and space built into it, but it doesn't touch you. Now, the key here is when I say you, what I'm pointing to is awareness, which is not a you. It's just what is. You are what is. You always have been what is. And you have been watching a movie unendingly about ego, about people, about time, about space, about life, about the world, about death and fear and love and all this stuff that's just concepts. But what has always been is something that to form is so foreign that it's frustrating as hell. It's the greatest trick of all time. You are nothing, but the idea of being nothing is impossible to you because you can't know anything about nothing. How can you be nothing? Well, surprise, you are nothing. What is, is nothing. The only thing that lasts is nothing. You thought that you were something, but something was actually coming in and out of you, coming not in and out of you, but rising from you and back into you. Thought has always been doing this from you. And what you are is not you. You are that. And that's why Maharaj says, I am that. You are that. We are that. That is what we are. You can't describe it. You can't point to it. It's nothing. But it is what you are. And you have been tricked into thinking you're something else. But actually, you haven't. Thoughts have. Thoughts have been tricked. Thoughts think. Thoughts think that they're ego. Thoughts think that they're humans. Thoughts live lives, but not even really. There are just thoughts of living, thoughts of life, thoughts of earth, thoughts of human, thoughts of Andrew, thoughts of YouTube, thoughts of ego. And as soon as they're done being thought, that which is still is there. No self, nothing, awareness, presence, Pure, divine, bliss, peace, love. Catch you soon. Peace. And just to be clear, all those things I just said about it are just words that don't even come close to touching it. It's unbound, inexplicable nothingness. Infinite. Love, bliss, divinity, peace, all that stuff. 
are just little specks that don't even come close to describing its infinite abundance. Again, still words, words that don't describe it, but it is not colored or tainted by forms that rise, decay, and fall, that are born, live, and die. It is, and all of that happens within it. And the seeing of that, the remembering of that, is what is self-realization.